All right, so let's move on to landed costs. And we'll do a demo of this because you have to see a demo of this. I mean, this is a, the most amount of new windows and new featurettes I've seen inside QuickBooks in a very long time. There's a lot of sort of moving parts into this. But basically, you turn on the, the landed cost feature uh, in the advanced inventory section. This is only on the Platinum edition of Enterprise. You have to pick a other current asset account to be the clearing account for your shipping expenses. We'll show that. You have to create an item. You have to create an item where uh, where all these um, landed cost components are going to be sent into. This could be shipping, this could be uh, customs, this could be insurance, all those things that get essentially need to be added to the cost of inventory. You're going to pick which items point to that clearing account. Um, and then you're going to have a new screen where you can allocate that. So that's going to just look much better in the demo. I'm just showing you what the, the screenshot looks like. And then uh, once the, the prices are, are updated, um, QuickBooks will give you the choice to update the selling price because, you know, sometimes we have specific markups that we want to have. And if our, you know, shipping costs and uh, insurance costs and uh, freight costs, um, customs, whatever, increase the cost of our product, Technically, we should increase the sales price of the product as well. Uh, then you're going to see a new little tag on the right that says includes landed cost, and it will proceed to do sort of that, that landed cost, classic landed cost workaround. And you're going to see the item prices go up, and then you're going to see the clearing account go down. I have to show that with, um, with the demo. So let's, uh, let me switch over to the demo. Alrighty, so we're going to do landed cost. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the edit menu, preferences, then I'm going to go to items and inventory. I'm going to go to company preferences. So I'm going to turn on landed cost. Okay, so I'm going to click on setup landed cost. And basically, what this screen forces me to do is to select a other current asset account or create a new other current asset account to be my clearing account for shipping. So I'm going to call this uh, clearing landed cost account. Okay, so I'm creating a new other current asset account. Now I completely hate the fact that I can not choose a cost of goods sold um, account. I really hate that. So again, in this screen, you are forced to create a new current asset account or or pick a current asset account. I wish I could have picked the cost of goods sold account, but that just was not there. Um, you know, I suggested it to the to the development team. I think they didn't understand the reason why, but it's a whole other ball game. For now, it's going to be another current asset account. I'm going to click on save and close, and then it says, "Hey, no items are mapped to that. That's okay. We're going to click on add later, and we'll show you that." Okay, good. So now landed cost is quote unquote officially enabled. So I'm going to click OK, and OK. So now I'm going to create a couple of items here, and let's do. Let me start with a. Other, it needs to be an other charge, and I'm going to call this shipping. And this could be a double-sided item, that's okay. And I have to make sure that clearing landed cost account is selected as the expense account. On the income account, I can just call this one um, you know, shipping income, whatever it happens to be, and then I click OK. So I got my item for shipping that is pointing to the correct account. I'm going to create another item. I'm going to call this one customs duties right? Tariffs, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to send this to the clearing landed cost accounts. And I'm not going to make this one a double sided item. I just want to make sure this goes to the clearing account. There you go. And then I click OK. And then I'll do one more. And I'll call it insurance. <coughs> insurance. And I'm going to send this one into my landed cost clearing account. So there you go. So as long as I got items that point to that landed cost clearing account, we're good to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of inventory parts here. So let's do um, widget one and we send this to cost of goods sold and sales. And let's make this one a cost of 50 and a sales price of 100. And we'll click on OK. And then I'm going to double uh, duplicate this one and then we'll do widget number two. And let's make this one a cost of 100, sales price of 180. Kind of varying these things. 
I click OK one more. And I'm going to double click here, duplicate, and duplicate screen. And then I'm going to do widget number three. And we're going to make this one $15, sales price 25 So I got a variance of widgets here that we're going to be using. So now I'm going to go into vendor, enter bill, right? So I'm basically going to get a bill. Let's call this one a whole sale world. And we're going to go ahead and bring a couple of items in here. So I'm going to bring widget one, widget two, and widget three. I'm going to bring 100 of each. OK, this is going to make it very easy to visually see it. So I'm bringing 100 of each. I'm going to click on Save. And what you need to keep in mind is I'm going to go into my inventory valuation summary. And we're going to, we're going to be monitoring this. OK, and these are the cost of our products, 50, 115. Now, what will happen is we're going to probably start uh, calling. Um, we'll probably start calling. Um, um, I, mean, I mean, we're going to probably start paying uh, shipping and, and uh, customs and insurance and all these things. Looking at an inventory valuation report that shows me all the costs based on, uh, based on the original bill. So now we're going to have uh, some additional bills. Let's say, for example, we have some shipping companies that are going to be charging us for shipping or we're going to be paying customs and all, all sorts of things. So let's call this one DHL. OK, and we're going to pay for shipping. Let's say we're going to, we paid five hundred dollars. OK, uh, let's make it more expensive. Five thousand dollars. OK, so shipping, I paid five thousand dollars. I'm going to go ahead and click on save and that's it. And then I'm going to create another bill completely separate. Let's call it freight insurance company and they're going to be insuring our cargo so i'm going to put here insurance and this is going to be let's say twenty five hundred dollars we'll change the date of that click on save and we'll do one more let's say u.s department of customs whatever it happens to be called and then let's say we're going to be paying some custom and duties of eighteen hundred dollars because okay, we're importing from China or whatever, right? So we'll click save and done, all right? So I got three separate bills, three, three separate expenses that are affecting the cost of my product, essentially, right? But they're not showing in my uh, valuation report as such. As a matter of fact, if I go into my balance sheet, they're sitting there on my clearing landed cost. So right now, all those three expenses are not it costs yet. They're not an inventory cost yet. They're just sitting in my in my balance sheet. Ninety three hundred dollars just sitting in my balance sheet, right? So now, what I want to do, or what I would like to do, is to spread those ninety three hundred dollars across my inventory assets evenly, fairly, whatever number you want to use, and that's what the landed cost feature does. So sorry for the long introduction. I think it's important to kind of uh, set up that premise because otherwise it's difficult to understand what we're doing. So again, we're going to spread the $9,300 into the $16,500. So we're going to go back into the bill that contains the items. OK, so there it is. There's my bill that contains the items, and we're going to see a button on the top right next to pay bill that says calculate landed cost. So we're going to click on calculate landed cost. And then this new screen pops up. <clears throat> OK, one, I, I got to tell you something. I absolutely hate how when they change the interface, right? Like QuickBooks desktop is supposed to look a certain way and they add these new windows that completely kind of throws this. This throws off the users. Big time. Now, sorry I have to get off my soapbox for a second, but these things drive me absolutely insane. I hate this. OK, but it, it still works. So we'll talk about the positive things, what works. So then here in the bottom, you're going to see all of the items and you're going to see their costs. OK, and we're going to click on the add bills button. So there's a little add bills button. And then this will show me. Let me see. Um, all let me click on this year. This will show me all the bills that have items that were mapped to that clearing account. So any bill that contains items mapped to the clearing account will show on this screen. OK, so now um, you can choose uh, you can choose which of these bills you can, you can do all of them. You can do some of them. You can choose which of the, these bills 
you want to allocate. Okay, in this screen, you don't do anything else but just choose the bills. So let's say all three of them need to be allocated into the item cost. So I'm going to click on Add Bills. Okay, so now, and this is really, really important, now you're going to see all, all the amounts to allocate. You don't have to allocate the entire amount. Sometimes you can have a DHL bill that's for three shipments, right? So maybe you want to use, you know, a third of that towards this or, 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 or some of it. Now, this, uh, this screens, <clears throat> unfortunately, don't, um, don't, uh, really respect the, the, common QuickBooks interface where I can just uh, do a sort of a built-in calculator. I can't. I hate that. I can't put 5,000 5, divided by 2. I can't, right? It doesn't work. So actually, I actually manually have to put, let's say, 2,500 because I only want to allocate half of that shipping because only half of the shipping belongs to this one shipment, for example, right? So that's something uh, just really important uh, to notice. The, all, the other thing that I dislike about this screen is that it doesn't show me the memo line and the memo line could have been really really useful for me to know which when i'm clicking on add bills it will be really useful for me to know okay which uh which of these bills belong to this particular bill because i could have added some comments in the memo line in the original bill where i can use it here so you're gonna have to like go a lot by memory and manual processes to figure out which of these shipments and um, and insurance and all this stuff belongs to which uh, of the bills that you're bringing in. Anyway, so you manually choose uh, to allocate here uh, how much you want to do it. You can click on view details and you can actually see the line item and you can see the description inside uh, view details. But I, I, I must wish I wish to see it on the screen. I wish I could at least customize and see it on the screen because it would be uh, really useful. Anyway, so down here, this is the, the, the most important thing is we're going to choose how we're going to allocate that money. So how are we going to allocate those $6,800 into the rest of that inventory? So I can do a couple of things. I can do by quantity. <clears throat> and this would be a, this, this is based on item quantity. So this will proportionally spread based on percentages across all the items based on its quantity. Uh, that could be a good measure to use. I can do it by percentage which in this case, I pick the percentage. So I can do, okay, I can say, and I have to delete this. I can say 25% goes to this item, 50% goes to this item, and 25% goes to this item. So I can manually pick by percentage where I want to allocate all that cost into each product. I can do it by amount. So in this case, this will do a proportional percentage amount based on the total amount of each of the items or I can do manual where I basically pick, right? So I can say, okay, this is gonna be $1,800 allocated to this item, $4,000 allocated to this item, and zero allocated to this item. All right, let's say $1,000 allocated to this item, okay? And it will do sort of a check to make sure that your math is right. So we'll continuously check. So I manually picked how much of all this money I wanted to put into each of the items. And then I'm going to click on uh, post it to bill. Okay. And then here's the magic question. It says, wait a second. Now you, before you, you thought your items costed 50 and because you thought it costed 50, you were charging a hundred dollars for it. There's a new landed cost. It's, so the reality is your product actually costs a lot more than what you think it costs. So do you want to change the selling price? So at this point, you can just pick a, a new selling price if you want to. I wish it multiplied it times the markup because that would make tons of sense, but it doesn't work. And I wish you can have a calculation here. So if I wanted to do 68 times two, it doesn't work. So it's manual process, boo QuickBooks for totally botching this screen. Uh, this was really forced in there. If you want this screen to work, the markup needs to be either applicable or you need to have the built-in calculator so I can calculate how much I want to charge for these things. But whatever. Let's say, for example, I'm going to manually put, I want to change this to 120. I want to change this one to 225. And I want to leave uh, this one at $25. Uh, $25. Uh, let's now, let's say, move it to $35. 
Okay, so now I'm going to do that and then I can click on update and proceed. And what this will do is it actually will go back to my item list and change the item price, the sales price, not the cost, but it'll change uh, the, the sales price. Okay, that way it'll prevent you as a user potentially screwing up and charging uh, the wrong amount. Again, nice touch, but the screen itself falls short in functionality. So now what you can see now is the item cost for each one was raised, so the, the landed cost raised the item price of each of these items just for the purposes of the PO, and then my item amount is obviously now higher than my bill amount, and the difference is actually going to be hit against my clearing account. So this is how um, landed cost works. It sends it back into the clearing account, and then we're gonna hit uh, save and close. And yes, and yes, so what would happen is, and exactly as we expected, now notice that my, my inventory cost is now at the correct amount, what it actually cost me to bring my inventory in. This will give me the correct cost of goods sold. This will give me the correct uh, profit per invoice. This will give me the correct profit per rep. A lot of my clients pay commissions to the reps based on profit. So this will actually solve that issue which you should be um, you know, a big deal. <clears throat> now, if you wanted to go back and kind of, if you wanted to go back and kind of undo that, okay, we can go into this bills. So I'm gonna go in, back into the bill. Okay, and there's a little thing here that says remove landed cost, okay? So if I click, click on calculate landed cost again, it will basically prompt me to keep adding more bills and more things to it. So I can't undo it um, in steps. I would have to undo the whole thing. So if I click on remove landed cost and click on yes, you go back and check if that works. Let's try it again, remove landed cost. Do you want to remove landed cost? Yes. Okay, there it is. So I send it back to where it's supposed to be, click save and close, and it basically undoes the whole thing. It goes back to the original valuation and it sends the money back into the clearing landed cost account. Now, one of the comments here is, couldn't you just use uh, customer jobs to solve this problem? Yes, you could uh, avoid the whole co uh, landed cost. You can send uh, all the shipping and, and, and insurance things to the customer and job and get the correct customer and job profit, but you will not get the correct profit per invoice. And sometimes the profit per invoice is valuable. So, uh, and then the other thing is obviously what this landed cost is attempting to do is helping you fix the item sales price. So when I go back into my items, if I go to widget one, uh, originally I had put that the sales price of this widget is 100 because of the landed cost workflow, <clears throat> it prompted me to put uh, 120, right? Sa same thing with widget number two. Notice that originally, I think, I don't remember what the dollar amount I had here, it was like 180. I pushed this and I, 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 I moved it to, um, I, I moved this one to 225 based on that. And then when I w went into widget three, same thing, I changed that from 25 to 35. So I think what one of the things that landed cost, um, um, landed cost, one of the great things about it is potentially prompting me to, to charge this, the, the right sales price so I can correct the behaviors of, you know, not making money on the items because I've, misunderstood my cost, um, but that screen really, really needs to be uh, improved in my opinion.